you said, Demi series do very often tend to get better with time. Lost being a dramatic exception. <laughs> <laughs> The Big Bang Theory was arguably big, but not very bangy or theoretical. Big Bang Theory is nerds trying to fit in a wild and beautiful world. Like us. Big Bang Theory is all of us before being nerdy. was cool. Ooh, good one. Hello, everybody, and welcome to Falling Towers. Watch the first podcast, the podcast which watched the first episode of a series so that you don't have to. You can, but you don't have to. Uh, today, we are doing The Big Bang Theory, first episode entitled Pilot. I hate that title. Everybody calls their first episode <laughs> Pilot. So uncreative. Anyway, everybody, you know our special guest co-host, Dr. Muhammad Noor. He's an occasional science Woo! advisor for Star Trek. He is the Dean of Arts and Sciences at Duke University. He's a great soccer player, all of the above. Two out of Not three. a soccer player at all, but always a pleasure to be on <laughs> Falling Towers. Watch the first of things. <laughs> uh, we have a very special guest today. He's an actor. He's gone all over the world acting, and his name is Rico E. Anderson. Hello, hello. Oh, great to be back. Great to be here. Great to hang with all of you, and especially Mohammed Noor, the soccer player. <laughs> <laughs> Not a soccer player. There's another Mohammed Noor who is <laughs> Okay, that's cool. Is it though, Muhammad? Is it? <laughs> My name is it's Ryan easy. T. Husk. I'm a nerd. Actually, I did play soccer back in the day. It's fun. It's fun. It's fun. Yeah. Uh, but that's not why we are here. We are here to talk all about, is it the Big Bang Theory or just Big Bang Theory? I think it's just Big Bang Theory, I think. Okay. I think so, too. Um, and in the comments, it is. <laughs> yeah, let us know. Let's just get this party started quickly, right? What's that from? Mm. CNC Music Factory? Oh. Um, no, let's get it. Yeah, let's get this party started, right? Let's get this party started quickly. Quickly, right? right. Play that beat, play that beat, right? <laughs> anyway. Yeah, exactly. All right. Uh, where do we start, Muhammad? Save us. We're going to be talking about CNC Music Factory. Going to make you sweat. Uh, so many decisions. We're in a predicament of what to do. <laughs> mm. That's right. We like to predict if the other person liked this show or didn't like it by how much, by how little, etc. We've all known each other. Well, actually, Rico and Muhammad probably haven't known each other too terribly long at all. Not, not well, I mean, we, we've met before. It's not our first time meeting. I, I don't actually remember. It was the first time we met, Rico. I mean, about a year ago or so? I can't remember. Something like that. A little over a year ago, I think. Yeah, about a year ago. But yeah. it seems like it's been maybe, I don't know. Has it been a I, Almost seems like two years, maybe even three. Maybe it was it feels two years. like forever years. that we've been talking about. <laughs> um, Yay for friends. Time, man. Time. <laughs> and uh, Rico and I have known each other for over nine years years yeah. best nine years of my life muhammad and i have known each other for a few of those years as well so i brought first, down a little <laughs> yeah no it's been great first things <laughs> first um hmm, muhammad i predict first of all i predict that you've seen this show and i predict that you like this show and i predict that you will like this show a little bit less than you remember because i think shows tend to get better as you know by season two and season three and so maybe you think season one wasn't as good that's my prediction that's a big long prediction but that's the sense i get rico i feel very similarly with you i feel like you've seen the show you like it i feel like uh watching the first episode again will be endearing to you you'll be like ah oh, it's so fun to see where they all started what about mm -hmm. you muhammad so I would have a priori predicted that you've seen the show, Ryan, but before we started, I made a comment about that. I thought they were at Caltech and you seemed unaware of this. So that makes me think maybe you haven't seen the show. <laughs> I'm sure you're aware of the show for sure. But hmm, yeah, I don't know if you have seen it or not. My guess in terms of this particular episode, now not the series, because like you said, I mean, series do very often tend to get better with time. Lost being a dramatic exception. <laughs> 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 I, would, I think you're going to think this was so-so, like kind of, I mean, not terrible, but not great. 
Rico, I'm guessing you probably have seen the show because I mean it's pretty popular. It's out there, and you and you seem like you're on top of things in terms of what's happening out there. Hell yeah! So I think, yeah, so I think you've seen it, and I think like Ryan said, I think you know probably you're you you've liked at least some of the later seasons, but I'm thinking this one maybe were like maybe a little bit of higher than Ryan, but not that high. <laughs> okay, that's my prediction. Your thoughts, Rico? You got any predictions for the two of us? uh ryan i think that you have seen the show but i don't think that you've seen all of the show um i do believe that i just froze and oh there i am hi and hey, hey what's up boys um but yeah I, I i believe that you've seen the show and muhammad um i believe you've i believe you have seen all of the show all of them. Um, wow. <laughs> well, I I believe that you know whatever our wheelhouse is in life, uh, if there's a show that we could gravitate toward in some way, shape, or form that um, complements that, or you know, kind of is is in whatever that ballpark, we're you know we're going to gravitate toward. It. Plus, we're all nerds, so you know. Beyond that, um, I feel like you. I feel like you've seen all of it, man. Um, and um, Ryan, I believe you've seen, I'm going to say maybe some of it. Mohammed, you made a good point. I I, I want to kind of throw that in, in Ryan's direction also. I feel like you may, if anything, you've seen like, uh, Ryan, you've seen like maybe the last half of the, of the uh, seasons mm. as opposed to the first. Okay. So those are our predictions, everybody. Uh, in the live chat, <clears throat> pardon me, or in the comments below, let us know your predictions. Do you think I liked it? Do you think Muhammad liked this first episode? What about Rico? You think he liked this first episode? Give us your predictions. Uh, while you're doing that, no stress, relax. Muhammad is going to buy you a little bit of time while you type away feverishly by telling us all what this show is even a boot. I got you covered. <laughs> So, after an awkward attempt at donating sperm, astrophysicists Sheldon and Leonard come back to their apartment and find a new, unusually attractive neighbor has moved in next door, Penny. Unfazed by their gawking, Penny seems happy to spend time with their new neighbors, joining them for lunch and then asked to take a shower in their bathroom. In a moment of weakness, Leonard agrees to try to get Penny's TV from her ex, and that ends poorly. But Penny makes it up to them by buying them dinner, where surely more hijinks await. Very good. Very good. All right. So <laughs> hopefully, everybody, you are finishing your homework assignment and making your predictions. And while you are finishing those up, we're going to give you some helpful hints in a little segment we enjoy calling Muhammad. Oh. Expect. So you say what we expected and getchins so what we actually got so expect getchins your thoughts rico expect no getchins is like we compare and contrast what we expected <laughs> versus what we actually got so it's a pretty fun fun game to play uh yeah, muhammad that's yeah that's what you expected mm -hmm. muhammad before you watch this first episode of mm -hmm. big bang theory what did mm -hmm. you expect if anything so Rico was mostly right. I'd seen a lot of this, but I'd not seen all of it. It's not a show that I watch regularly, but it's one of those ones that's always on the plane. <laughs> like when you get on the plane, <laughs> on like the like right. the little Delta viewer <laughs> thing, they always have Big Bang Theory. Like, <laughs> so, <not>? right. Yeah. <laughs> so since I'm there, I often watch it, and you know, I I, I think I'd seen as as Ryan predicted, I'd seen more episodes later in later seasons than the first season. I definitely had seen clips from this pilot before because you know Facebook and it's like Facebook stories thing often has little clips. And often if it's a Big Bang Theory one, I was like, eh, I'll play that little clip and just see what it is. And sometimes it's ones even from this particular episode. So I'd seen a fair bit. I didn't remember what the plot for this particular episode. Obviously, I knew the characters. I knew Shelton was like, you know completely on another plane from everybody else and unable to interact in a way that that that, that most people would consider sort of typical <laughs> whereas Leonard was less so and and you know and the others as 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 I guess we didn't see the others that much in this episode but we'll get we'll get back to that soon but I, I didn't know too much about the pilot I mean I knew the pilot was gonna be the introduction to, to um Penny but I didn't really know how what else was happening in the pilot besides introducing Penny and obviously them being awkward around her 
So I'll pass mm. the baton to Rico for what did, what did you expect? Um, I expected, I expected because this is Chuck Lorre and uh, Chuck Lorre has a, a, a really cool catalog of work that, that has, that has been and is still out there, um, currently out there in terms of, uh, shows. I expected, um, a combination of, uh, smart comedy as well as classic comedy storytelling. Mm -hmm. um and just pure comedy um as as a whole uh smart comedy in terms of he he's he is known to have stuff that although it's funny it's stuff that is uh that that could be relevant to uh issues of society um mm -hmm. you think of the show like mom which deals with substance abuse um but then you have like you know just pure comedy like two and a half men you know which is uh you know, deals with family and things like that. But for the most part, it's just really quirky, fun comedy, what have you. But then you have like um, um, uh, the Kaminsky method, you know, things like that. So I, I, I expected things like smart comedy, but also classic comedy uh, storytelling, which uh, just makes for a, a great ride, no matter what the episode. WTF all of those shows like Mom and Kaminsky Method and all those that Rico just mentioned. Put those in the comments yeah. below if you'd like us to review those shows. By the way, we forgot to mention all of December is family month. So all like family shows, you know, shows that aren't too childish or too adult humor or too sci-fi, the, 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 the family genre. So if you've got a favorite family show or a show that you hate that's in the family genre and you want to watch a squirm through it, let us know in the comments below. Type WTF and whatever that family show is, like Big Bang WTF Theory. All you know, in the family. <laughs> yeah, not too much toilet humor in this one. Uh, you know, kids could, you know, or like Full House, WTF Full House. That's like a family show. Yeah. Anyway. All toilet so, humor. Yeah. Ultraman, WTF Ultraman for sci-fi month when we do that. Um, I'll tell you what I expected before I watch this. I have never seen this show. Wow. Not any bit of it. What? Yeah, wow. I have never seen this show, but I'm very aware of it because every all the nerds in the Star Trek circles and, and everywhere else talk about it. It's a it's basically like a sitcom for for Star Trek fans and for nerds. And I've seen, you know, still frames of episodes with these guys at Vasquez Rocks in Next Generation Garb oh, yeah. or something, you know, where one is Picard and one is Worf and stuff like that. Data. So, yeah. Right. So I, I know that they certainly. Oh, yeah, that would make sense. This guy might be Riker. This guy might be Worf. This guy's obviously Data. You know, anyway. So the point is that, like, I'm very aware of the show and I know that it's nerdy, but I really hadn't seen any of it. Don't really know what the show is about other than it's about nerds. Doing so I have to ask you, what do you watch? on? <laughs> what do I what? What do you watch on the plane when you're on a plane flight and that's the little TV? What does do it? Watch? <laughs> I don't know, but I, I do think I've seen Big Bang Theory, like in the the list of things but i'm like nah that sounds dumb um <laughs> i like try to find seinfeld seinfeld's easy um okay so what i expected was for it to be a good show because everybody talks about it everybody loves it it's got this guy from roseanne that you know that's cool this guy um whatever his name is he's cool i think Butter. he lives yeah i mean the actor i think the actor oh, okay. lives up in california's central coast so I expected to like it. I expected it to be pretty good, funny, maybe some Star Trek references or other nerdy stuff, and that I would like it. But that's what we expected. Dr. Noor, what did you actually get upon viewing this? I have to say, if Seinfeld was, a, was an option on the planes, I would always default to Seinfeld. I think I haven't seen that option Smart on Smart man. Maybe this I don't is... go as far. Maybe I start in the AB and I'm like, okay, this one. I need to scroll yeah. further and see if I can find Seinfeld. Seinfeld is the way to go. Is, yeah, totally. This was interesting because like I said, I'm not sure I'd seen the earlier seasons much at all. And I had a friend, I won't say, I won't say this person's name, so you can call him out, 
who would always be very critical of the show. And the things she was critical of the show were about the the representation of women, especially and the way women were treated in the show and saying, oh, they, they portray women as, as dumb. And I said, well, but like, what about Bernadette and Amy? And, stuff? and these are the people who are apparently not in the first couple of seasons. I'm guessing they must come in significantly later. And I've seen clips of the ones at least where Amy's introduced. I actually don't remember how Bernadette got introduced. Watching this pilot, I didn't where she was coming from. <laughs> I kind of got that. Like, okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, it was, it was, there was, I had some chuckles in there, like the comment when the, the they said it was a high IQ sperm bank. Uh, and they were asking if that was the case. And the lady said, well, you know, <laughs> it might not be appropriate for you if, <laughs> if you have to ask or something along those lines. I had a couple of chuckles here and there. The interactions with Penny, I, I found almost painful. Like, you know, I found her completely unrealistic that these these two guys come like gawking at her from outside her door. And she's just super friendly and just happy to just have lunch with these complete strangers who were just gawking at her a minute ago. And then wants to use their bathroom to take a shower and weirdly doesn't even go get ex- extra clothes or towel from her own apartment first. What? Like, yeah, this, this seemed just completely unrealistic to me. The parts I so those are the things I, I didn't like. So let me let me balance it with some things I did like. I thought the portrayal of Sheldon was kind of amusing, just because I've seen him in later seasons, and he is kind of funny how how he's you know uh, like if you if you play Dungeons and Dragons, he would definitely have truthfulness as a as a <laughs> uh, disadvantage <laughs> where he can't put up with even the slightest lie even being said in his presence. So that was kind of funny, and, and just his nerdiness about wanting that spot on the couch, which you know. I thought that was kind of funny, just having these little, these little sort of almost ticks, I guess you'd say, in a way. So th- those were okay, but yeah, it's definitely not as good as the later seasons when you watch this pilot. Yeah, I, I, I came away a little bit surprised that that the start was not stronger than it was. So mm. I'll, I'll I'll stop there. I have a lot more thoughts, but I'll stop there and give you guys a chance to talk. Rico, what did you actually get upon viewing this first episode? Well, Muhammad, I gotta, I gotta agree with you on on the whole thing about uh, like uh, Penny wanting to take a shower and like not going to get the clothes. That 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 was a little weird. That that was a little, huh? What? Oh, okay. Because um, anybody who wants to take a shower at somebody else's place, you're like, you got you got replacement clothes or whatever, you know. So, um, so yeah, I, I thought that was I thought that was interesting. I I will say this though, I I I thought it was a I thought it was a fairly strong. Uh, beginning, I, 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 but I, I do feel like it was one of those cases where um, they were all tr- still trying to figure it all out, and and they were like, all right, so we got these central characters. Let's go ahead and really um, um, get them out there, get get the audience used to them, and let's let's start off. Let's do kind of like a, a soft launch of these characters and what they're about. Um, I I actually did see the realism of sure yeah she she is meeting these strangers and she's putting a lot of trust in these strangers which yeah that could be very questionable uh, and understandably so but also I'm thinking hmm, putting all that aside maybe she felt safe with them you know maybe I mean taking a shower in in their apartment is very much you know far fetched but beyond that her feeling comfortable to hang out with them and, you know, just all that kind of stuff. I don't know. I could be wrong on that, but you know, she felt maybe safer with the nerds as opposed to like, you know, a mm-hmm. bunch of meatheads. Um, I did. Um, I did feel like th- there was very much a, um, a standard uh, formula of what's uh, considered like the eight characters of comedy. I took this mm-hmm. class by uh, Scott Sedita, who uh, who teaches this? And um, the eight characters of comedy basically t- tap into the specific type of comedic uh, characters and storytelling, um, and and the different types of people and what they represent. Um, and I have it written down real here, real quick. So you have the logical smart one, the lovable loser, the neurotic, the dumb one, the bitch slash bastard, the womanizer or the manizer, the materialistic one, and the one who lives in their own world. And while you have just the beginning of of the full cast, I feel like you saw representations of those those type of characters in um, in this, and mm-hmm. so it it really tapped into your traditional type of comedic storytelling. And um, 
yeah, I, I thought I thought for the most part it was a strong start, which you know, which which introduced the characters pretty nicely, especially when the other guys came in and you know started dropping. I feel like maybe Raj was probably the most like underdeveloped one as far as uh, yeah, you know, like really, two lines. <laughs> yeah, yeah, people not really knowing what he's all about. You know, you didn't really get a sense of oh man, I can't wait to see what Raj is doing next. You know, so there you well. Go. I'll tell you what I actually got. You know, I don't really know. I don't really have strong opinions on this. I didn't I didn't really laugh. I think there were one or two funny moments. I was like, boy, that's weird for a sitcom to not be funny. Uh, it was quirky. It was charming in, in, at times. It was fun at times. I too found the lady to be completely unbelievable, uh, at least her motivations. Uh, but I guess all four of those characters are not realistic in their own ways as well, but still their motivations were at least more realistic than hers. Hers just made no sense. Uh, you know, even when she said like, oh, go, go ask for this TV from my, you know, big, mean, violent boyfriend. And then yeah. goes, oh, well, I thought that maybe, no, that's not, this is not a real thing that somebody would do. And especially not in the shower. <laughs> it's just not something that, right. yeah. And if it is something that somebody would do, then yes, that somebody would also go take an, a shower in a stranger's place and do all kinds of dumb things, you know, because she clearly doesn't have a brain. Um, so whatever, it was fine though. Like for some reason, I I don't judge this show as hard as I feel like maybe it deserves. And I don't know why, and maybe we'll talk through it and I'll figure it out. But for some reason, you know, I think this show was fine, even though it wasn't very funny and the characters seemed unbelievable. But I think it's probably just because there was a lot of potential and, you know, it's, you could see where this show could go. Um, but Muhammad, you said you had a lot more to say about this why don't you jump into the things that you love about this show uh, i mean a lot of things i love is where it goes eventually yeah. <laughs> so if we're talking about for this episode again really i think the thing i like the most was that it did set up what these characters were generally like i remember there was an ongoing plot in the beginning for example that raj couldn't talk to women and I remember that like happened all the way through the point where I think he even slept with Penny at some point and he still wouldn't talk to her. And she's like, really? <laughs> <laughs> Except I think the one exception was like if he had alcohol. So, you know, Raj was fine. You know, Howard is is creepy as usual. <laughs> and he was as appropriately creepy. <laughs> um, Sheldon again was was, you know, again, sort of neuro neuroatypical and in, in, in his interactions with everybody. And but at the same time, brilliant. And that was is he very supposed well to be autistic or have asperger's or he's on some kind of spectrum uh sheldon i don't know if it's ever said that explicitly but i mean he's certainly he's certainly atypical in some sense yes. i'm not sure exactly what that is um i think it's the two that bugged me were really um leonard and penny i mean with penny again like you said she's just so unrealistic and and i felt like she's just a little too dippy like okay i mean yes she's not like an astrophysicist kind of from art but like she could be, you know, a doctor. She could, I mean, she's, she's living in the same apartment with these people. She could be, you know, an entrepreneur. She could be something else, but like, no, she's a cheesecake factory person and thinks her idea for this, uh, for this thing that she's writing is completely different from her life because she's from Omaha, but the person she's okay. writing is from Lincoln. Like, okay. Okay. But Muhammad, Rico, and I can confirm this. That was definitely a wink to LA people. They, everybody wants to write a script about their own story that they think is mm. so interesting but then they go oh no it's just it's just uh what do they call it uh inspired by my life oh. and and just like dude it's not yeah, yeah. you know this so yeah. so i didn't find that didn't bother me um, oh, okay. but but know. what did though is that i i felt like the i guess it's just lazy writing and i hate to say that because at the end it says chuck Lorre, and i'm like oh he's pretty good um i didn't know it was a chuck Lorre show but it just felt lazy to where it's like we need the two guys to run into her boyfriend. How do we do that? Gosh, she just tells them to, or what? And it, they don't, it felt like they didn't think of whether somebody actually would do that. You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. Uh, Le yeah. Leonard just struck me as too creepy, too. Because I mean, he's a character I kind of like later on. And it's like, dude, <laughs> like lay off her a little, like take it a little. Like, she lives across the hall. It's not like you're nerds not are see creeps, her again. Muhammad. 
Yeah. Yeah, but I didn't like that. Yeah. Like, I don't want to see creeps. So like, I, yeah, I know they exist. I don't want them on my TV shows. <laughs> I mean, I, I, I feel like Howard was a little more creepier. Oh, he was definitely more creepy, but he's supposed yeah. to be creepy. Yeah. <laughs> right. But I, I think Leonard was, I think he just kind of represented like the, you know, the, you know, the typical, oh my gosh, she's, I, I really like her. She's, she's beautiful, but I'm having troubles. I'm having the troubles talking to her and, and expressing myself. And as a result, stupid stuff's coming out of my mouth. You know what I mean? It's like, it, 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 I think he, rep, I, I feel like he represented that. I will say something, uh, just kind of going back into the uh, whole thing with Sheldon, uh, Ryan, in terms of what you were asking, uh, possible spectrum or, or what have you, going back to the eight characters of comedy and just those rules as a whole, um, one of the things is uh, living in their own world. Mm. And That's a Sheldon Phoebe. Is, that's Phoebe or Kramer kind of characters, right? Yeah, but I feel like that's the Sheldon one also because when you listen to him, it's like it's almost like he's saying things and not realizing what he's saying could potentially be damaging. It's like almost like he's cock blocking so much in the sense of uh, sorry, this is a family one <laughs> um, <laughs> where you know, like uh, uh, what is house. it? Leonard's trying to like you know talk to Penny, and then he's saying things he. It, He's and then Sheldon is saying things that it's just kind of like, dude, you're killing me. Why are you saying this? Or uh, masturbating for money. Um, when he was talking about, uh, oh, I love cheesecake. You, yeah, but you're lactose intolerant. It's like, dude, come on, man, you're killing me. You know. And so it's like, I, I he just he comes off as like that living in their own world um, type character. Um, but definitely, there's there's. And and Friends is actually another comedy that the class uh, references, as well mm -hmm. as Seinfeld. A lot of '90s comedies yep. were referenced in it. Um, so, yeah, I think, yeah. I think probably for me too is I just found like the it just, it's tiring. Like I felt like the whole episode was just about uh, Leonard trying to hit on Penny. Like, okay, <laughs> like I don't want to watch that. <laughs> That's kind of what I walked away with. I'll watch it as long as it's funny. Speaking of which, what were the funny moments? For me personally, I can say, oh no, I've got a few minor ha's in here. First of all, it took a while before anything was funny. And the first line that I thought was funny was when Leonard says, you listen to what she says and then you give an appropriate response, right? Mm -hmm. But Sheldon says, to what end? Okay, that's funny. That's clever because he's just like, what? how how long do we do this for you know uh that's cute i thought that was a well-written and well-delivered line um sheldon says leonard can't process corn that's a light a light laugh you know it's more funny because of the delivery you know of process or i don't know whatever um oh this was actually good was when the girl starts crying penny right she starts yeah. crying and sheldon looks over and goes what's happening yeah, that's funny that was funny I heard that's that funny one. you know right um, that delivery was really exactly oh, yeah. Yeah, that's yeah, what it was that. and uh when she gets up right after that and sheldon runs over and takes a spot back also cute and clever and that's the extent of the humor from my end uh, what about you, you like guys the lady at the sperm bank i like the lady at the sperm bank i thought she was a little funny mm. oh the oh the, lady. the whole yeah, sperm yeah. thing didn't do it for me the whole the yeah. That entire scene, there was nothing funny in there for me per personally, but you guys got some good laughs out of it. I, I forgot the woman's name at the sperm bag, but she she's a veteran actor. She's been she's huh? been in the business for since like the seventies. She's like Althea or something like that. Ver I, I think it's Vernie Watson, I believe. No, no, but the the character name. The the, the black woman at the sperm bag. Yeah, yeah. Do you remember oh, what her name? They said her name. I forget it was like it was like Althea or something. Yeah, I don't remember what her character name is. I, I just I just recognized her from yeah. just, just her career as a whole. Yeah, I think it's Vernie Watson. She's done a ton of stuff, like from the seventies all the way through. So mm -hmm. her, her career is very much um, big. You know, I one of the things that I and I'm I'm a sucker for this type of comedy. I, I love the whole hi 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 type. Oh thing no, that you're doing. the guy they were aiming for, huh? <laughs> yeah, they got me. They were like, let's, yeah, let's hit the Rico people. Um, <laughs> and, but I love that type of, and, and what makes it funny is, okay, the first time it was funny and then they kept doing it. 
but they were doing it very strategically because it wasn't just the I, I, I. They did it a couple of other versions of it. Yeah. And they didn't overdo it. I didn't feel like they overdid it. I feel like they did it just enough where it's like, all right, this is how we're about to hit you in the in the first episode. We want to draw you in because we want to show you we know we know certain things that are going to potentially draw you in, or at least the Rico people. So um they mentioned MySpace. Was MySpace still around at the time? Or was that a joke? It's or certainly like a dated MySpace it. historical joke, huh? It certainly dated uh the show yeah. for me because I didn't know. But yeah, that's a good question. Was MySpace done by then? And that was the joke, was that they're like, I'm on MySpace. And the, the audience is supposed to be like, haha, that hasn't been around in a year, you weirdo. Oh. Yeah, I, don't know. yeah. I, I wasn't I wasn't sure on that. I feel like MySpace um, and- went on till like I think it did fine until right around maybe 2009-ish. Okay. I thought it was f- before that. No. I thought MySpace died down like around 2000. No, <laughs> no. Well, maybe it died around 2009 or 2010. That's when I think everybody kind of went, well, wait a minute. No, 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 no. Maybe 2005. Yeah, no, you're right. It, oh, shoot. Whatever. Anybody know Tom? Anybody yeah, no. know Tom out there? Yeah. Get him on the, get him on the horn. <laughs> um, yeah. No, you got to turn all the way around and look behind you and do it. Not worth it. Wear a white t-shirt. <laughs> you remember oh, that though, when you first joined MySpace, and you're like, "Who the fuck is Tom? Why is he my friend?" I didn't ask yet. Like the first thing right. I think everybody did was think, "What? What's the situation here? Why am Why am I already getting a friend that I know for a fact I didn't add? Is this Does this thing have a glitch? What's What's the problem?" <laughs> Tom just added himself. <laughs> yeah, that's a little. Uh, presumptuous tom but he's like hey thumbs up you're like all right but i'm watching you <laughs> watch yourself tom um I'm trying to think of some other funny moments um i i'm i'm overall just a nerd for even stupid comedy i i love that stuff like i love the high highs um i thought i thought the timing even on the part where penny was like Hey, what do you guys do for fun around here? And then Sheldon just instantly hits you with the, well, earlier we were masturbating for money. That was funny to me. That was hilarious because of just, you didn't expect that. To, that that was a left field um, delivery because you did not expect it to be said that way, delivered that way. And again, Sheldon, no filter, no realization that the things he's saying is is like, Dude, what the hell? I don't know. It, it just for me it worked and it and it it roped me in. It made me go, okay. All right. The Klingon boggle. Oh yeah, that was the, the first Bob- Star Trek reference. Yeah, that's right. Klingon boggle. Yeah. Well, yeah. Muhammad, let me ask you. You and I both have scenes in our backgrounds clearly from the same yeah, episode. Just the same, yeah. But I don't remember either of these scenes in that first episode. No, I don't remember it either. Even though this is from supposedly from the first episode but that's what i googled i googled pilot and this came up but i don't i don't remember all of them eating together like this like like behind yours for example no and i also or thought no. that when she offered them to offer to buy them dinner but then suddenly there are two extra people i did find myself wondering did she say oh cool and bring your weird ass friends too or were <laughs> they like cool we're coming too and she's like okay but I only offer to buy the, okay, I hope they don't expect I'm going to pay for, every, you know, it's one of those weird, awkward I things. Want to do that. You're like, I'm offering to buy this person lunch. And then suddenly they're bringing three friends and you're like, um, did you, they're nerds. So maybe they think that I'm their mommy now. <laughs> I'm guessing they make a lot more than her too, since she works at the Cheesecake Factory and they all work at Caltech or whatever. <laughs> Cheesecake Factory is cool though. Like it is, there. but I'm guessing actually I recommended rent. it to you, uh, Muhammad, when you come visit you LA. Did. I did recommend it to you. Now you did. Think of it. Maybe we'll see Penny. <laughs> yeah. You never know. Mm-hmm. You so, uh, Rico, what did you not like about this show? What made you just go, you know, harumph to you guys? Hmm. I, I know. Harumph, say, um, the the parts that didn't make sense did kind of kind of get me for a minute. Um, the, the interactions with Penny didn't bother me. 
Um, Raj not really having much to say was a little like, what, what's that all about? Um, I would say the the unrealism of Penny just asking to take a shower and then asking them. Oh, she by should the way, want it, she should ask to take a dump instead. That would have been funny. Oh, that would have uh... been hilarious. <laughs> yeah, that would have. <laughs> like if she says oh can i take a shower and they're like oh yeah absolutely and then she goes you know actually i'll just wait till my water comes back later tonight but actually can i just take a dump here then then suddenly like their faces go from glee to like uh that would have been much so. funnier and much more realistic <laughs> <laughs> that would have been funny that would have been funny and then um, she leaves and then says you know then there's curry jokes all abound and all kinds of right. stuff you guys are out of toilet paper by the way so I used someone's <laughs> face towel. I, oh. I did think it was a little weird that, and I don't know, call me crazy, but did, the fact that they went to the dude's house and tried to get the TV and he depants them. And yeah, I understand the whole thing with, you know, giving nerds wedgies and all that kind of stuff. But the whole walking out of there without your pants thing seemed to it didn't really work with me it didn't, didn't work understand what physically like, did he like i don't understand pants? What right i don't understand <laughs> how that pants. physically works because they still had their shoes on too so i'm like right how and and all these other things were all these inconsistencies so like did they sense. take off their shoes from like he's pulling on, he's like you better take off your shoes and then they did and then <laughs> but then when they're leaving like they calmly like just put their tie their shoes back on. He's like, I'm hanging on to these as souvenirs. I'm going to put them up on my pantaloon wall or I, the whole thing. <laughs> I found myself like lost in thought about how that whole thing worked. How it all went down. I mean, <laughs> keeping in mind the fact that this is comedy and I, they're clearly taking liberties that one would not take if this were real life per se. So also that. one more thing that I got lost in. How did they drive back? Because I was like, doesn't he have his keys and wallet in his pants? Oh, and they good he was they weren't holding anything. And then I'm like, well, then did they leave their keys in their car? That's terrible. And they didn't walk <laughs> in with anything in their hands. So this whole thing just falls apart for me. I was very disappointed. <laughs> Maybe as they left the building, they looked up and they went, "Excuse me, um, we could you." We need our keys. Can you? But then they left their mind? keys still in their car too, because when they returned to the apartment, their hands were empty. They didn't have, you know, anything hanging out of their pantaloon panties or anything like, you know, like a keychain or a wallet. You said panties or a purse or pantaloons. <laughs> anyway, I didn't pick up on the keys part. That's actually a good point. <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ryan. bugged me. What's that all about? Anyway, well, Muhammad, who is your favorite character, though? Come on, this is. I mean, Sheldon is the most interesting character. Of, like, you know, especially in this episode, Sheldon was the most interesting character. Because, I mean, Penny was ridiculous. You know, and Raj didn't have anything. And Howard was was creepy, extra creepy. And I he just got. sang I got, a great I, song. I, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, now he did. <laughs> and Leonard, you know, again, I mean, I, he, I guess he wasn't as creepy as, as overstating a little bit, but he just. It was a little a little too much there. So I, I I have to fall back on Sheldon as by process of elimination. Though I did like Sheldon. Actually, I thought his performance was good. I thought he he played the role well. And I could imagine, knowing a lot of scientists as I do, I could imagine somebody who behaves very similar to Sheldon. So he's an exaggeration, but not by as much as people might think. <laughs> <laughs> For a lot of people that I know. So fair enough. So I, I I would definitely say Sheldon is my as my favorite from the ones we saw. Though maybe though I have to say I did like I said I did like the the lady at the sperm bank. <laughs> Rico, who is your favorite character and why was it Penny? Be honest. Um, what? <laughs> um, <laughs> um, I I really enjoyed the Sheldon character. Um, I, I I thought it was a great introduction to what would eventually be uh, a fan favorite and just mm -hmm. you know. Uh, the development, the beginnings of the development of this character, and um, Kaylee Coco Penny because she's hot. So there is that too. Um, like, yeah. So I'm gonna have to give two answers on that, and there you go. Thanks. And that's just fine. Uh, you, you know, I I took all this time right now trying to figure out who my favorite because I didn't really none of the characters did anything for me. 
but I think that the uh, what's her name Penny might be my favorite because I thought that her acting was really good. I thought that it's not easy to be a character where you're thinking my lines don't make sense to me. I don't understand this person's motivation for why she's saying this, why she's doing this, why she's acting this way, but still being able to deliver it believably as if the character believes it. Even if the circumstance seems unbelievable, she's Mm -hmm. delivering it uh, as if the character believes what she's saying and believes what she's doing. And that's no small feat when uh, the writing's a little suspect. So I think I was probably... Uh, rooting for her the most. I was certainly, yeah, I was certainly rooting for her the most because she was the, for the her as an one. actress rather than as a character. Well, also the character because she was like, you know, the the one that was not annoying. <laughs> I mean, I they weren't bad. Fun. No, none of the characters were bad. None of them bothered me. And also, I'm fine with Raj and Howard having less lines, and and because that makes it easy to really sink our teeth into two or three characters. And then episode two, you sink your teeth into the next one. Then, you know, I, I was fine with that because they dress differently. They look different. So it's easy to understand. Okay, that's this character. I'll probably learn more about that one later. But it was interesting how many things I saw through the pilot. This is something I did like about it, but it's one of the things that doesn't help most people. There are a lot of references in the pilot that are relevant in the series finale Ooh, 12 oh, seasons wow. later. 12. So I thought that was, yeah, it was 12 seasons of the show. So it's that was, vinegar. it was noticeable. Like when uh, there was a comment that, that Sheldon said, or, or what, what was it? Um, not Sheldon. Leonard said like, our kids will be uh, uh, smart and beautiful or something like that. And and I like, and I liked actually Sheldon's response, not to mention imaginary, but there's a scene in the finale, which this isn't a particular spoiler, but there was smart there were and watching. finale. Smart and beautiful. But, uh, <laughs> no, that's but, just um, like a smart and final joke. It wasn't. But, Rico liked it. Oh, I see. But Sheldon actually in the finale says something like, your kids will be smart and beautiful. I'm like, oh, that's where wow, that nice. comes from. <laughs> oh, that's, that's a nice little attention to detail. I will say yeah. this. I, I felt like Penny could have easily have been played like a Phoebe. Yeah. And that would have been a lot, a lot better. That would have been more believable. Yeah. Yeah. But right, but I I I wonder if somebody get Laurie on the phone. I wonder if it was a conscious choice when they created the character to not have that because it seems like it would be the obvious you know stereotypical uh dumb blonde type type uh portrayal that they didn't want. And I didn't see dumb blonde at all. I I I saw somebody open book quite the opposite. Huh? Open book blonde. Open book blonde, but definitely not not dumb. Not, I mean, definitely not Phoebe. You know, maybe I mean? vapid. But I just, I don't know. I just, I just felt like it. Clearly, there's more to her that one. If one wants to find out, you watch further episodes. But um, it was an interesting introduction, which which definitely didn't. Um, which definitely portrayed her against a stereotypical type. But you felt she was well. So it was interesting you said because I actually felt Phoebe in some ways was smarter than than at least the portrayal in this episode, not in the series, but in this episode. Mm-hmm. You know, in the sense that like I don't think I mean Phoebe was a little bit. I don't know. It's, it's a tough call because when you first said it, I was thinking more in the context of Phoebe. I think of more as bohemian than dumb, right? Yeah. Well, I also think that they couldn't. If they did that kind of character, they might have duplicate characters, character sure. types. You know, sure. they, she couldn't be the dumb one or the weird one or the socially awkward one or the one that's in her own world because we're basically dealing with four different versions of that already. She needs to be mm. in some way a contrast to that. So even if she's not being portrayed as intelligent, she's being portrayed as more, you know, world world savvy, whereas these people have... <laughs> low world iq you know they're book smart but they don't have they lack common sense and so she, about, it's kind of about the world savvy walking into that apartment man <laughs> yeah I don't think so. <laughs> she's just trusting she's like okay i could take these guys i do jujitsu right i'm gonna i'm gonna bully these jerks and while um, i'm at it i'm gonna take a shower in there 
<laughs> take a but dump. Especially again, like the, her crazy. first interaction with them was them gawking at her with the, for the door open, just staring at her like they're like, "Wow, okay, that's <laughs> I'll go hang out with these people now." Right, <laughs> even right. separating out the shower part is still like. I still feel like her reaction would have been like, you know, slam the door shut when, it, when she first saw them at the door. <laughs> or something. But again, I don't know. Maybe she saw a comfortable factor to them. Or, maybe you know, she's like, it's not like you meet your neighbors first. And, you know, but yeah, comedy wise, it could have easily been the old classic, but doom, door slam. Yeah. So, yeah it, it can go either way. Well, speaking of slamming doors, everybody, it's time to talk about Rico for a little bit of time. Hey, Rico. Because we can't wait. Uh, Rico E. Anderson, actor, you just got back into town very recently from Europe. Can you tell us where and why? Yeah, I just got back from Budapest, Hungary, and this is my first time ever in Europe. I've never been wow. to, I've never been across the pond. And um, I shot an episode of FBI International. Uh, an amazing, amazing series, an amazing role. Um, just just an actor's dream job in terms of the character, in terms of um, just so many different levels and, and, and layers. And a lot of fun, a lot of fun um, portraying this character. And add the fact that I was flown all the way across the world to shoot it in a country that I've never been to, um, it just it was just like the icing on top of the icing on top of the icing of the cake with sprinkles, extra cherries, and um how cool was Hungary? Was there like a culture shock? Did you fall in love? Was everybody annoying? What's the story there? Did you just like look around and say, Wow, I'm in a Disney movie? Hated it from day one. No. Impossible. No. Okay. Shout out to Hungary. Um, no, I loved it. You know, it was interesting because as I was schlepped around when like, cause we were picked up and taken everywhere. Like whenever we, we were picked up from our hotel, taken the set, um, um, uh, our set was, in, we, we were mostly, we were 98% on location. So, um, base camp was like 10 minutes away from us. And, Damn, that's um, cool. Yeah, yeah, like literally there. I, I could have I could have walked there from the hotel, which was great. Wow. Um, but like our on location areas was, you know, you, some of them. Sometimes it took twenty to thirty minutes just to get there, so it, it allowed a lot of opportunity to just you know look around and check out stuff. And what I what I noticed that was very interesting was there were a lot of elements of places that I recognized or that seemed familiar here back home. I saw elements mm-hmm. of. Uh, like New York, I saw elements of Chicago that where I used to live when I was a little boy. Um, I saw elements of San Francisco. I saw lots of uh, uh, elements of just different areas, um, and it was cool to see. It was, it, but but with all that said, I saw a lot of the history, the European history that came from um, a lot of the old buildings and and um, the history up behind them in terms of what these neighborhoods used to be back in the day and in terms yes. of like world war two and connections to like Russia and, and, and just France and just Germany and, and just all the influences that are there. And that was what so, what was so beautiful to it because, to me, because I'm just get I'm getting like all of this at once. And I asked a lot of questions because I was like, you know, I wanted to know, you know, I, I wanted to know what the history of, like even the neighborhood that I was in was was mm-hmm. was all about things like that. So it it was it was an amazing experience. Um, shooting there was an amazing experience. Some of the places that we shot on location, I see why they shoot in these spots because just aesthetically, it's it's just um, like I took a ton of pictures I, that I can't even post now. But until you know the show airs, but and I'm excited to post them because. Oh, Some those pictures places. that you sent me, those were great. Thank you for oh, sending yeah, me all yeah. of those. I'm just yeah. kidding. Everybody watching, it's actually not true. He didn't send me anything. He barely responded to my texts. No spoilers. No spoilers. Are, are you, well, this might be a spoiler question. Are you allowed to say if the places you were filming are the places in the show? Or are they just like, this was supposed to be a different place? And we just have oh, to no, film the, it. And 
Oh, I can say that. I mean, yeah, yeah. The, all the places that we that was on location that we shot, yeah, it's all it's all going to take place in the show. Okay. You may not see all of it because of quick shots and you know movie magic, but um, they were all there. Like I did a lot of you well, know behind I think, the scenes. I think what Muhammad meant, and correct me if I'm wrong, maybe I misunderstood the, the question. I think he means like if when you shot in you know say some place in Hungary, is it supposed to be Hungary in the film, exactly. or is it taking the place of Austria or Italy or something like that? Like, yeah, oh, okay, that's right. Mean. Are you actually not, shooting in the location that is represented in the film, right? Something like that. And if you're not allowed to say, it's okay. I can't, I can't say. I can't. Yeah. Say. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Um. But. Just, you know, shout out to Hungary, shout out to uh, Budapest, shout out to um, the people Hungary's there. listening right now. <laughs> yeah, the they whole are. country. Shout out to just the crew, everybody that I worked with, the cast. I mean, everybody was just, it, they were wonderful, man. They were welcoming. It, it, it was it was a role of a lifetime. And it was so much fun. So much fun. Um, you know, we, we, we do what we love when the opportunity arises. Um, when stuff like this happens after numerous countless auditions yeah. where you don't get the part and then when you finally get it, man, it's like, it's, it, it, it's everything. And, and, and That's to be, awesome. like, yeah, and just to be able to get that and get that where, and it was very quick. Like I had booked this thing on a Thursday. I found out that I basically had gotten it on Thursday. My agent's waiting for the offer to come in like the contract and stuff. So for people who don't understand the business, you find out basically you get it and then you get the offer with the contract, which helps to solidify it. And then, you know, it's just a matter of time before you're on set. I get this thing on a Thursday, Friday rolls around. We're waiting to hear, because you usually get the offer pretty quickly afterwards. Nothing happened. My agent hits up like casting to find out what's happening. Monday and they're like, well, let's take the weekend. You'll probably get something next week. Monday morning, I get a call from my agent saying you're flying to Budapest tomorrow. Wow. wow. And I'm just like, <clears throat> which means, and I was ready to go for the most part, but you know, I thought I had a few extra days. So it it definitely was a thing where um, I was having to um, hurry up and you know get things you know done quicker than i than i thought it would but no it was it was great it was great it was it was an amazing just ride i can't i i'm excited for people to see this character to see this episode january 3rd is when the show Ooh. the episode airs fbi international january 3rd our good friend melissa longo's birthday if i remember correctly hey, hey. just a couple days after our good friend muhammad noor's birthday am i right hey. That's also true. <laughs> All right. Well, happy birthday to you both. And like two months before Rico's birthday. Hey! <laughs> good times. Are you allowed to tell us anything yeah. about your WTF character? good times. Sorry, Muhammad. Yeah, yeah. Um, I can't. I, okay. I unfortunately can't. I wasn't yeah. sure if you had an episode earlier that then you could describe from that, but not yet. Mm. No. No, I, 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 I can't. And even if I could, I wouldn't want to. I, I, I Because wouldn't. you're mad at us? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, Just speaking you. of good times, everybody, uh, check out Rico's goodies. Of course, go find him online. Uh, you see what yes, channel on? it was on? Oh, no, uh, so in the States, it's on CBS. Okay. Um, and for all the Star Trek nerds, Paramount Plus, if you nice. uh, if you if you miss it on the actual uh, uh, day that it's going. But I always encourage people check out the show when it airs live, because. Uh, those ratings help and all the things. Uh, but if you can't, that's fine. I mean, Paramount Plus will be airing it like the day after or whatnot. Um, yeah. Of course, it will always be, also be on Hulu. Not sure where it will air um, in other countries, but check your local listings for time and date. Does anybody even check local listings anymore? I feel like that's what they used to say. Like Jay Leno would say that in like the 80s yeah. or something. And, and you know, newspaper, and, uh, you, not, a, not a funny thing. The Sunday paper, listings. you get that little TV week with the, the list. Yeah, the TV guide. I, th I think that's what local listings they want to Man. Talk. And so, remember, even the evolution of that was like the TV guide channel. Remember yeah. that? Oh, that sounds terrible. <laughs> Terribly yeah. fun. Well, hey. uh, let's move forward, everybody. Muhammad knows he's chopping karate's right now. The he's chopping line. onions. And <laughs> this is it. It is time for the terrible twos. Bottom line. Bottom line. 
See, Muhammad calls it the, the bottom line. The line at the <laughs> bottom. It's the final two questions of the show, the two most important questions, besides the ones we asked you, Rico, of course. Uh, and here they come. Question number one is, Dr. Muhammad Noor, on a scale of one to ten, what would you give this first episode of Big Bang Theory entitled, checks notes, Pilot? Pilot. <laughs> I struggled with this one because I do like later seasons of the episode, which almost in some sense is making me grade it perhaps more harshly because I see how much it get it actually grows later on, how much it corrects a lot of things that I found to be, you know, deficiencies, or at least even if not actual deficiencies, just things I didn't appreciate about the particular part. So it actually has a lot of room to grow. On the positive side, I thought, you know, Sheldon especially was very well established and I love the character and I love even the portrayal in this particular show. I take Ryan's point that Kaylee Cuoco did a very good job portraying that completely unrealistic woman in the show. <laughs> Penny. So I'll grant that. And, you know, it was a decent setup. I just didn't enjoy it. I mean, honestly, I just did not enjoy it at all. So I, I, I think I can come right in the middle and say a five. Mm-hmm. That's right for this one, for the pilot. Again, not for the series. Those of you who love the series, I do too. <laughs> but the pilot, five. Wow. Um, it is a toughie. Uh, <laughs> yeah what about you uh rico e anderson scale of one to ten so i'm gonna confess something um this is actually my first time seeing the pilot oh wow and as a result of literally coming in with fresh eyes um i'm gonna say in this case i'm gonna give it i'm gonna give it a 7.5 7.5. I mm-hmm. I found myself invested enough in the characters to want to know more. Um, with the exception of Raj, because again, they kind of just threw him in and I didn't really get any, I didn't really feel like I was shaking his hand hello. And, but with the other characters, it did make me, it did make, it did make me uh, invested in in show show some investment in who they are, yeah, and what they may be all about in future episodes. Okay, uh, yeah. Raj. By the way, I did look him up. Uh, Raj ends up turning out to be his last name. His first name is Gu. A lot of people don't know that. Um, so, <laughs> that on a fun. scale of one to ten, you know, I'm really conflicted about this because, I mean, the show is a 5.8, I think. But for some reason, last night when I watched it, I kept thinking, I want to knock it down low, but it's but I want to give, but the impression I'm getting is a 6.8, which is really strange because I'm like, I don't think the show's very good. But for some reason, 6.8 kept flashing in my head. So I have to just stick with that and say 6.8. And I think the only reason I can explain that away is because I explain. think I think what it is is that I didn't think it was very funny. I didn't really care about the characters, but I can see why and how other people do. I can understand why people would like this show, including this first episode. I could feel like it would have hit a target audience that would say, hey, this is pretty funny. It's imperfect, but it's funny. I like the characters and I'm interested in seeing where they go. Uh, So that's why I think it's a 6.8 is, you know, for me, I think it's lower than that, but I think that I think that the the TV execs, for example, when they watch this pilot, they're like, oh, pretty good. Oh, you know, oh, good job, everybody. We, we go, The nerds are going to like this. You know, I think they were happy with that product. By the way, I did look something up and it turns out before this episode, there's something called the unaired pilot. So they have an unaired pilot and a oh. pilot and they're both calling it. So call it something else. Call it when, you know, the penny comes to town or whatever. Um, but I would be interested in watching the unaired pilot, which came out almost a year and a half earlier. Wow. We gotta find this. Just pilot. look that we up. Do a yeah. Watch the first uh prequel. We should have a month which is unaired pilots. Ooh. Yeah. That'd be interesting. There's All right. For Avatar too. Avatar the Last Airbender has not. Ah, son of a what have I done? <laughs> You're like, not again. <laughs> That's a show for embryos now. Oh my All god. All right. <laughs> so uh 5.8. 
Oh, wait, no, 6.8 is the final answer. I'm giving it the benefit of the doubt because I think that I can understand why some people would like this. And, you know, who am I to rain on their parade besides the guy that usually does? But question number two, for the purposes of this podcast, we all had to watch the first episode of Big Bang Theory. But now that the podcast is over and we're free to move about the internet and for Rico all the way to Hungary, would you, Dr. Knorr, of your own volition, watch the second episode? So based on the pilot, I would be so terrified that the show is just going to be about Leonard chasing Penny. And maybe it reflects my own bad experiences in college being a nerd chasing people. I don't know. Being but... chased by. <laughs> no, no, it wouldn't have been that. <laughs> maybe. The... I don't know what the reasons are, but like I would have no desire to see more of that whatsoever. <laughs> I would have zero interest in watching more episodes of Leonard chasing after Penny. Uh, and especially when Penny's like giving him time of day, kind of too, which also seemed completely unrealistic. So I'm like, no, nah, I'd have to say based on the pilot, no. That said, you know, as as we as come up in many of our episodes of Watch the First, I'd happily again watch it like a season six episode or something like that, where I know it's already past that being the the central plot. And I actually don't remember if that that was an ongoing plot in the first season or if that was just this episode and then the next episode is going to focus on Raj doing something else. I don't know. But based on this, no. Sorry, long answer. Yeah, that's great. Rico, what about you? Now that the podcast is over, would you watch the second episode of your own volition? Before I answer that, I just want to point out to everybody watching out there, my Afro is not lopsided like this makes it look like. This is a result of... Yeah, it's <laughs> lopsided in a different way that we can't see. Exactly. This is a... Uh, of the green screenness of it all that is making my wonderful afro looking like it's got a little crook in the yeah side. it is your afro's gorgeous rico and everybody knows it and if they don't know it you are gorgeous. they need to know it <laughs> thank you all right so what was the question oh would i watch the second um uh i would i would I I'm I'm a sucker for this kind of stuff and I I I'm also the type of person who really wants to see things through mm. and it's it's got me enough to want to know what could happen next. So, yeah. I I pull the trigger and um I definitely hit that second episode button. Or in the case of HBO Max just let it play because it automatically plays it. The second one unless you say otherwise. I just like that you paused there. You're like, I would pull the trigger and hit that second episode. <laughs> and I'd watch the second. <laughs> yeah. uh, all right. For me, it's a no. It's a pretty easy no. It's not an angry no. It doesn't. I, I didn't feel like my time was wasted. Uh, I was happy to have watched it, you know, to eliminate the mystery of the show. And I can understand. I, you could tell the show is going to get better. You know, they're just going to feel it out. It's they've 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 set a good situation, a good premise. We get where the show is going to go. That makes it a successful pilot, in my opinion, that we, you know, you get the characters, you understand it. They're going to iron out the kinks. Uh, but for me, watching this based on that first episode. No interest in watching the second. I would, however, as Muhammad said, and also using the word however, um, be okay with watching whatever the Star Trek episode is. If somebody says, oh, you got to see season four, episode seven, where they go to Vasquez Rocks. Okay, I'll watch that. If it's just one scene, I'll probably just watch the scene. Uh, but whatever, I'm I'm fine with the show. I'm I'm happy that people enjoy it, but it's a no from me. Um. That being said, that's all we have for you guys today. Thanks for joining us. If you'd like us to review a show, especially if it's a family show, in the comments below, just put WTF in that family show. You could say WTF Full House, WTF Fuller House. You could say WTF Good Times. You could say WTF. What's happening what's now? Yeah, I don't I like remember. Now. That must have been a family show because I don't remember it being too crazy, right? Oh, it was. It was successful to what's happening. Yeah, there was what's happening, what's happening now. Uh, you know, everybody's just like, are you just naming uh, sitcoms WTF Bob's Burgers, as the French say? Uh, okay. Or if you like this show, you can do Young Sheldon. 
Actually, yeah, we were going to do Young Sheldon at first. And we we're like, wait, we haven't even done the Big Bang Theory Big Bang. yet. What are we doing? We're so silly. Um, all right. So what I'm trying to say is this podcast was made of big things, bang things, but there are not very many theories. Mm, not so many theories. Rico's this the podcast. banger. Oh, <laughs> I've been told. This podcast was diversity of opinions on a popular TV show among friends. Yay. <laughs> this podcast brought people together through curry, the pantsing, <laughs> and any random female taking showers in strange dudes' apartments. Mm -hmm. I think we can all agree <laughs> on the Steph Curry part. Good mention. I do love the Warriors. Um all right, everybody. So uh, please be sure to like this video, subscribe, give us a five-star rating, leave some comments, tell your friends all about us, you know, digitally with the link, not just telling us that like a picnic, you know, telling your friends about you us. Do that too. <laughs> I mean, yeah, but. Do what you want to. Don't listen to Ryan. Just do, <laughs> do you, boo. Do you. Boo. That's probably better advice. Yeah. All right. Uh, everybody, please remember what Mr. Michael Kenyon Rosenberg likes to say. Don't forget to be an organ donor and don't forget to watch the first of things. Freeze frame like your least favorite character. Uh... <laughs> I don't know what this character with a. I don't know what to do. Cheers.